This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, February 17. God is not being removed from schools. That's the assurance of Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw in response to claims leveled by the spiritually aware group. The group took issue with a circular issued by the Ministry of Education that said there will be no prayers, but students would engage in mindfulness sessions in their classrooms while following the COVID-19 protocols. The education chief, however, made it clear this was not the case. I just want to make it absolutely clear that the Ministry of Education is not taking God out of schools. If you look at the circular that I saw circulating as well in the public forum, that circular was addressed to principals. It was intended for principals because we had a number of meetings prior to the distribution of the circular which outlined how the sessions will go during the morning periods. Now, instead of uh, general prayers, general assembly, we said that we will have the students come into the classroom. We will find out how they're doing. We will interact with them because many of them have suffered loss. We understand that. So we want to hear from them. We want to be able to guide them accordingly, to talk about love, compassion, and having understanding for the situation. So this circular that you are seeing has nothing to do with taking God out of schools. In other news this Thursday, health authorities report there will be no more routine quarantine for persons who are potentially exposed to COVID-19. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Bess explained during a COVID-19 press briefing this morning that the time for quarantine will be reduced from five to three days. So we do not recommend routine quarantine, um, but this process needs to be managed by public health officials. So the other thing that we did is that we reduced the period of quarantine from five days, if there's testing involved, to three days. So if a person is exposed to COVID potentially, we can test them at the time that, they're, that it is brought to our attention with a rapid test. And after three days, we can do a PCR test to make a definitive determination that they did not, in fact, acquire COVID. So that's the other change that was made in terms of the length of time of quarantine once testing is involved. So there are some circumstances in which we would still employ uh, quarantine. And those circumstances would be if you have a caregiver of, say, a, a, a child or a toddler who is the positive case, the caregiver cannot possibly uh, physical distance safely from that child, so therefore they need to remain in quarantine or if it's a caregiver of a dependent, such as an elderly parent. In those circumstances, we would quarantine. Starting next week, health officials are introducing visitation for patients at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. However, head of the isolation facility, Dr. Corey Ford, made it clear that this was being done in a phased and structured way. So what we've come up with um, certainly as a team, and it's going to be a very structured process, just to let you know that it's very, 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 very structured. Um, is we will allow, if you have a positive, a positive person, obviously in the facility, who is in primary isolation, A, and we'll start off like that, and then we'll see how we can progress. I think it's good to start and then expand, as opposed to go too fast, and then you get yourself in trouble. So we'll start in primary isolation where we have our most sick pe persons in the facility, in prim primary isolation A. And what we're gonna do is allow, if you are a positive individual at this time and you have a family member in there, who's gravely ill, we're gonna allow you to visit, but in a very structured fashion. You would imagine that, I don't know, sometimes we spend like eight hours, um, David, six hours, seven hours, sometimes for some people even longer in. And I think the point I'm making with that is that obviously we have to have a lot of people we have to take care of, so we have to make it very structured to try to bring you in. We will bring you to the facility and we will take you back because you're still in isolation. So we don't want you running about catching a bus, for example, or, or, or driving your car to Harsons Point, etc. So we will bring you in a structured way. Meanwhile, as COVID-19 restrictions continue to be relaxed, Dr. Ford is warning Barbadians not to drop their guard. Ford praised the public for following the protocols during the height of the Omicron wave, which he says averted the high number of cases that were predicted. We as a country never certainly um, got um, to the numbers that might have been expected. Um, and why was that so? 
um, in the context of what I've just spoken about. Good governance, um, protocols which were in place, but I think sometimes we don't give sometimes the, the public the credit that I think they're due. And I, I just want to tell the Barbadian public today that I believe as well that a lot of the outcome which we've seen, certainly with the Omicron outbreak, which did not look certainly in, in most cases like the rest of the world, it was because of you and the sort of efforts that you've put in. Barbadians are knowledgeable people. If you give them the information, I expect you know they will act on it. And I'm asking you to act on this information that I've given you today. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. The Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 272 new cases, 125 males and 147 females from the 1,648 tests conducted on Wednesday, February 16. The cases comprise 60 persons under the age of 18 and 212 who are 18 years and older. There were 125 people in isolation facilities, while 4,041 were in home isolation. Two people died from the viral illness on Wednesday, a 76-year-old fully vaccinated man and an 89-year-old unvaccinated woman. As of February 16, there were 307 COVID-19 deaths recorded. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Grenada, the chief medical officer laments that some Grenadians are misusing the services of the island's hospitals. She says some families are leaving their vulnerable relatives at healthcare facilities, especially around the carnival and other festivities. We get more in this report from GBN News. There are cases that during festive seasons, um, family members sometimes, you know, look at the hospital as a, a let's say a, a daycare so what happens is that medication sometimes is not given um, patients end up in hospital and then the persons who are caring are free to 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 socialize and this is a trend we have seen over many years and it continues to happen dr donald speaking during tuesday's post cabinet briefing said there is often a spike in admissions at hospitals during the festive season adding that last Christmas was no different. During um, the festive times, we generally have a spike in the number of admissions, and Christmas was no different. Um, we've had an increase in the number of persons coming in with the NCDs, the non-communicable diseases, uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension, strokes, um, kidney disease, so we have had an increase. On the international front, President Biden says the threat of a Russian invasion of Ukraine is very high, but the door to a diplomatic solution remains open. We get the details from Reuters TV. It's very high. Why? Why? It's very high because they have not they have not moved any of their troops out. They've moved more troops in. Number one, number two, we have reason to believe that they are engaged in a false flag operation to have an excuse to go in. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine, attack Ukraine. Is your sense that this is going to happen? Sure. Yes. Not, I, my sense this will happen within the next several days. What are the things that Is there any diplomatic path still available? Yes, the there is. There's a clear diplomatic path. That's why I asked Senator, uh, Senator uh, Secretary Blinken to go to the United Nations and make his statement today. He'll lay out what that path is. I've laid out a path to Putin as well, uh, on, I think, Sunday. And so there is a path. There is a way through this. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www 
barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.